Hello, Wendy. Hello, everyone here in Facebook. I am Danny Garola, Stamp in the Pink Barn, coming to you from a nice, cool, dreary Tucson, Arizona. We are in a storm right now. We um, haven't had much but a couple of sprinkles, but it is surrounded all around us with these big black clouds. And you can see that uh, there is rain going all around us. Now we have these um, mountains back behind us here. So when storms come in, a lot of the time it will miss us and go around because the mountains kind of shield. I have this one piece of hair here that's gonna drive me bananas. Um, the, the mountains kind of shield as the storms are coming in, it kind of parts around these mountains. So up here on this hill, we don't get much um, of the rain when it does happen. But it was so black behind my house, it was ridiculous. So you guys might have saw the photos that I had posted that you looked out the front of my house and it was completely sunny and blue and a couple of little clouds here and there. But behind my house, it was black and dreary and kind of scary looking. So it's just kind of funny that, you know, how it was kind of like down the center of my house and how it had parted like that. So, but it is definitely cooled us off. It looks like we are at 96 degrees when we were 106 uh, just a few hours ago. So that's always a wonderful thing to have these clouds come over and cool everything off. I did take a picture of down to the, um, I guess it would be kind of the northwest of us, we had a haboob come through. Now, if you're not familiar with what a haboob is, um, it is a huge dirt storm that comes in. There are videos on YouTube that people have recorded from, um, I think Phoenix, that the big one that I had seen, it really came over through Phoenix. It made everything, it, in the middle of the day, it made everything black. Um, street lights turned on. Um, you had to go into your home because you couldn't breathe because everything was just, it was dirt. It's just blowing dirt that comes through. But because the dirt is so thick and so heavy, it completely gives you kind of a blackout. It, it's really kind of an eerie, eerie feeling to be in one. I've only been in the one and there's actually, because of our freeways, um, if you ever experience driving through a Habib or a Haboob or whatever the heck they're called, um, that they have a saying that it says, um, God, I'm so horrible at remembering these. I know turn around, don't drown. I remember that one from the, the flooding, but it's something get off the road and don't break. Or I don't know what it is, something like that. But it really never made sense to me that when you were to pull off the side of the road, you need to shut your lights off. Now, to me, that was like, well, wait a minute. Why would I shut my lights off? If somebody goes to pull off also, aren't they going to hit me? Well, now they have let us know, or now I've learned over the years being here, that it's because they don't want you to be pulled over on the side of the road. And because the visibility, it's almost like being in a snowstorm, that the visibility, by the time they creep up on you, if they saw your headlights or lights, um, your, not brake lights, but your running lights, they would think that you were still traveling down the road and then they hit you. Okay, well, how does that make any sense? Because they're gonna hit you regardless of whether you're sitting there with lights on or not. So I don't know. Luckily, I don't drive when there's crazy weather going on um, and I've never gotten stuck in one of those crazy storms. So thank goodness for that. Oh my goodness. Look at all of you guys that have popped in here. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Becky. Hello, Pamela. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Anna. Hello, Marcia. Hello, Kay. Hello, Mom. So, yeah, just um, kind of one of those cool things. Oh, so another um, update on our house down, um, down three miles away from our current living um, situation. We, uh, we have a guy. He's down there. He's doing all the work on the house. They're repainting all the walls. They are... 
um, going to be redoing the floors. Um, we just got uh, the floors picked out with what we're going to do in there. Also, he had to replace some of the subflooring because our air conditioner down there was leaking. The condensation was going underneath the floor and we didn't know it until it was too late. So he's come in, he's fixed all the subflooring's. Well, um, in our laundry room, the water had gone through the laundry room and we weren't quite aware of it, but uh, the guy who was working down there, his son is about, he's a couple of years older than my son, so like 19, 20, and he was down there working and helping his dad out and painting and stuff. And he was in the laundry room and he was getting ready to paint and stuff and he fell through the floor. The subflooring broke. He fell through <laughs> and I, I hate to laugh, but thank God, thank God, he is a big kid and he is, you know, a very, you know, tough child. Well, not child, he's an adult, but um, he only got a couple little bruises on him. Like I said, thank God. Um, and, but when he went through the floor, he hit one of the water pipes and then water went shooting everywhere. Like in my mind, I know it's not funny, but in my mind, you know how you can kind of like get a visual of things. I just kind of see like maybe an old movie or something where somebody falls through the floor and all this water goes shooting. So the guy had to go running outside after getting his son out of the floor, he had to go running outside and um, shut the water off. So they've got that all fixed now and we've hired somebody who came in who did uh, all the cleaning of the yard. The, the yard looks phenomenal. Um, he got all the yard debris up and did all the um, landscaping and it just looks really, really good. Uh, so we are getting closer and closer to getting this house on the market. Um, we just have to now get, we're waiting because we can't do the molding around the floor yet until the we get the new flooring done in the kitchen area. So that's pretty much what we're waiting on. They have painted all, all, all new fresh paint on the, all the ex interior doors. They've fresh paint on all the interior rooms and walls. So it really looks like a completely different house, you guys. It's kind of crazy to go there and see it and be like, oh my gosh, this is the same house I lived in. It really looks great. So I hope we um, can sell it quickly and we don't have to keep paying house payments because that's always fun, but whatever. So you guys are not here to hear me keep talking about all this, but I do want to give you guys updates and let, keep you guys informed because I know you guys will message me and ask me, you know, how things are going and what's going on in life. And so that's kind of what is happening. So we are going to make some really, really beautiful cards today using the layering of leaves. Now, this is a achievement set, a million dollar achievement set from Miss uh, Rachel Tessman. She has done a ph phenomenal job with um, helping design this stamp set. It also coordinates with one of our previous punches, the bow punch, which has always been a favorite and a go-to with so many of our projects because it's really neat to just put some floral accents behind sentiments and all that kind of stuff. So she's done a really great job with re, uh, creating a stamp set with this punch. Um, also, uh, we've got giveaways to go through. We've got um, a little bit of news. We've got an upcoming promotion coming up that you're not gonna wanna miss, especially uh, if you would like to earn yourself some more of those um, $5 coupon codes. So hold tight, let me get you guys flipped around and we will go through all the things and then we will make these beautiful cards. So hold tight. I'm sure by now you guys are well aware that on Thursday when I went to do my coffee and cards, I had some technical difficulties with um, my camera or my phone, I might say, it would not rotate to the landscape, um, landscape uh, style. And it was very, very frustrating because I had to wind up. I tried and I tried and tried, but I had to wind up giving up 
which I don't like giving up on many things in life, but I had to just call it good. And then I went home and I just recorded a pre-recorded video so you guys could see the super cute card that I was trying to get created for you guys. Um, but I don't know what is going on with my phone. We were going to go to town, but that was the same day that, uh, um, I was supposed to, oh, that's the same day that the kid fell through the flooring and my husband had to run over there. So it just, it kind of all was crazy how it all worked out. So I was supposed to take my phone into uh, AT&T to see if I could figure out what is going on with this crazy phone. But I hope coming Thursday, there was a new update on my phone. So I don't know if that's what was kind of making things wonky because I know that can affect um, some of the settings so we will, fingers crossed, that this Thursday coffee and cards thing go, things go well. Obviously, my phone is working perfectly fine here on Facebook, so that's a good thing. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Kim. Hello, Lois. Uh, who else did I see? Hello, Linda. Hello, Kim. How are you guys all doing? Thank you guys so much for coming in here and uh, get ready to stamp with me. So let's go ahead and get right into things. Now, um, Miss Anna Rebadu, she is so thoughtful. I believe I saw her in here. Um, she sent this beautiful, isn't this so cute? I love all the little bugs on this card. She sent this to my card for his 18th birthday. It says, happy belated 18th birthday. Welcome to adulthood. Only you can make it what you want it to be. And that is such the truth. And so, of course, I saw the um, envelope get mailed and I kind of figured that it was for him. And I handed him, I mean, I kind of knew that it was probably a birthday card because Anna is just so thoughtful. Hello, Rhea, um, with making sure that she always sends the kids birthday cards and anything, you know, that's going on in life. Um, and so I handed him the envelope and he took off into his room with it. And I go, hey, I go, was that a card that you got? Obviously knowing that it was. And he goes, yeah. He goes, um, your friend that watches you on your Facebook lives, Anna, she sent me a birthday card. And um, I go, hey, I go, well, can I see it? He goes, well, I already displayed it on my, and it is so funny, you guys. And I know you guys heard me say this story before. I make my kid birthday cards all the time. I make my kids cards for years now. He doesn't display any of the stinking cards that I make, but he loves Anna's cards. He just thinks it's so cool that somebody who is watches me here, well, and she's a part of my team, um, sends him these cool cards. So <laughs> I just think it's so cute. <laughs> so Anna, he definitely displays your cards. I, I had to kind of fight to get this card to bring it in and show it to you guys today. I just love showing all the inspiration to everyone when you guys send me cards. It's just kind of my thing. Okay, let's get to uh, giveaways really quick while I am on the um, whole subject of cards here. All right, so last week we did the Silly Goose cards. Such a fun set. Now it is a standalone stamp set. There is no coordinating dies or punches. So it's a wonderful set and fairly affordable that uh, you can um, create many, many cards with. So last week we made this super cute little birthday card here using the balmy blue and we did some Versamark stamping in the back to make that background. This card here for liking last week's video, this card is going to go to Courtney Glanker Austin Darp. I know I'm slaughtering your name. I said that before when you've won... Um, items in the past and I apologize but uh Miss Courtney this is going to be coming to you in the mail and it has the little goose in the inside so you can gift this little birthday card to someone all right for commenting last week on the video we made this really fun fun fold and can this card can be made with so many different uh different stamp sets it's just a really fun and kind of interactive card 
to make. Now this one for commenting last week, this card is going to Miss Frida Alsip. So Frida, get ready for some happy mail coming your way. All right, you guys, and for sharing last week. So as you guys know, when you share my video, it helps support my business and for other people who might be looking for someone to um, purchase stamps from or learn how to do stamping, you guys sharing my video to your newsfeed gets it out there so other people can see it and maybe they will even share it themselves. Now, you have to share it here on Facebook on this video. Now, whether you come in here and you watch me live right now and you see that little live red button up there, or if you are watching this at a later date, you just need to come in here and hit that share button, let it go over to your news feed, then be sure to come back and tell me that you have shared it in the comments of this video so I know that you're there because notifications um, will not let me see who has shared the video. It just lets me see how many people have shared my video. All right, so for sharing last week, I am giving away, thankful for Miss Wendy for sending me this as a um, giveaway. This is the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. So remember that this has to be used with the specialty plate when you run it through the, <clears throat> when you run this through the embossing machine because it is the 3D folder. Um, I'm not gonna open, it is brand new. Um, this is going to Miss Lisa Smith Hoover. So Lisa, I don't believe that I have your address. Please do not put it here in the, uh, the, the comments of this video. You can either message me at stampinthepinkbarn at gmail.com or you can message me straight on the Facebook Messenger and I can get that in the mail to you. All right, as you know, I do this every Monday for you guys. This is my Make It Monday free stamping class for you guys. Now just remember that when you spend $35 or more in my store, now that's before shipping and tax, and you must use my host code, you are going to get as a gift from me, you're going to get enough items to make the cards that we are making tonight. So it will come to you just like this with all your scrap pieces in there for doing your stamping. Now, if it is something that requires a, um, like a die cut piece, I will add that in there. Now, just to let you know with the uh, bow punch and the stamps, since I can't do any stamping, I'm not gonna punch these for you because they're not gonna come out the way you want them because it's very hard to try to line everything up on these already punched pieces. So it would be a good opportunity to buy the layering leaves and bow punch and um, then you can get enough product to create all three of these cards. Now, just remember that it does not come with any of the embellishments, but if there is any ribbon, I will include that because that can lay flat and it's just easier for me to put that in your package, okay? And then like back here, as you can see, this piece is embossed. I will make sure that your pieces are embossed for you. All righty. Yes, Lisa won the embossing folder. Congratulations, all of you guys. Thank you so much for your love and your support. Um, okay, so our paper pumpkin that is for the month of August, this is called Meaningful Flowers. Now, I did get to see a sneak peek of a video that they have released um, for us. Now this is the August paper pumpkin is full of flowers that carry a sweet meaning. The blue forget-me-nots represent loyalty and remind you of your favorite memories with those you care for. The lotus blossom represents overcoming challenges and encouraging those around you. With this kit, you can create special paper crafts that are personalized for your loved ones with both design and significance. Now, I do know that on the back of the cards, it's actually going to say 
like the same for the Forget Me Nots or and the Lotus Blossom one will have the same for the Lotus Blossom. It's a really cool little saying that they've put on the back of the card to just give you a little bit more of that personalized um, car. I mean, it, it just kind of gives you uh, more of a sentiment on the back of the card as well. It's really a really cool thing. Now this kit is going to um, give you enough product to make eight cards for each of two designs, eight coordinating envelopes. It's gonna come with a pretty peacock stamping spot. So that is a great way to get all your stamp pads. And it comes with one of those new in colors that, um, well, it's not an in color, but it's one of our refresh colors, the pretty peacock. Um, one photopolymer stamp set, and in this kit, you're actually going to get an additional distinctive stamp set as a thank you. Oh, Peggy, I'm sorry that I'm freezing up on you. Is anybody else having problems? Like I said, our weather is really crazy outside. The wind is really whipping. And I may um, be winding up freezing for some of you guys. Um, I, I hope it we get through this. Um, Pre-cut paper pieces of watercolor designs and enough adhesive to complete the projects. But I was saying that in this kit, they're including a free stamp set. So not only are you going to get the one that stamps all the flowers and stuff, but you're going to get an extra stamp set in here as a thank you for um, signing up for Paper Pumpkin. Okay, woohoo! coming up on July 19th. Now, you guys need to make sure that you um, uh, mark your calendar for this. So not only are all of our stamps going to be on sale for 24 hours only, again, happening July 19th, but every $50 that you spend, you are going to earn those coupons for bonus days. So don't forget that. So it's 15% off um, on our cat on our stamp sets from our 2023-2024 annual catalog. Now that does exclude our host stamps because host stamps have to be earned. We can't purchase those. All right, so I really want you guys to remember this. And again, when you shop with me and you spend over the $35 and you use my host code, you're gonna get the kit of this week to make these beautiful cards that we're gonna be making tonight. Mm. Okay, I still have my Countryside in class to go. These are PDF only for this class. Um, the cards have already, the kit has already um, been done and over with, but I still have the PDFs for this. You can go to stampinthepinkbarn.com and once you're there, go over to kits and you can scroll down and you can see all my kits or PDFs that I have available. The Timeless Arrangement is this month's kit. I still have many of these kits left, so be sure to um, go over there and check that out. It will make eight cards, two of each one of these. You've got two of them that are in very vanilla and two of them are, that are more of the basic white. So this is a very, very beautiful kit, very reasonably priced. So if you guys have this um, Timeless Arrangements bundle, um, I really highly suggest that you either purchase my PDF only for this, or you can get all that pre-cut cardstock, all the embellishments and the um, ribbon already included for the very, very low price of only $35. So please go check that out. You won't wanna miss that. Also, while you're there, you have the option to add the adhesive kit. This is a kit that is coming in a bag to you and it comes with everything that you see on the sides here. So you can complete your projects and make sure everything is stuck down and adhered. Mystery stamping. We have mystery stamping coming up this Wednesday, which is going to be the 19th 
Um, I've already put out the supply list of the items that you need to grab and have available. Now remember you guys, this is for everybody to join. You do not have to just use Stampin' Up! product. Use any product that you have. I know you guys have um, already some 12 by 12 cardstock probably sitting around. You are gonna need a fairly long sheet of uh, your designer series paper. Um, and so just make sure or not you don't need a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. That's not what I meant. I meant of your um, designer series paper. So go check that out. You guys are gonna um, be live with me here on um, the 19th here in Facebook. I have an event already created for this. Hello, Linda. <coughs> and so um, you guys, when you submit your cards, you have the opportunity to win a couple of gifts from me this month. You can check that all out over on my blog under Mystery Stamping and look for the, it'll be the first one on there. It's for the month of July. All right, we have had a refresh happen to our online exclusives. Um, we have got some Christmas items in here now. I do know that the, uh, what is this called? Very Merry Christmas stamp set was out of stock as far as I know it still is. And same with the uh, trucking along is out of stock as well. Um, but these are, again, great things to get yourself ready for the holidays and to earn those bonus day coupons. Yep, and that's what it is. So right now, when you shop in my store, you're going to earn a $5 coupon for every $50 spent before tax and shipping. And then you can redeem those uh, coupons in the month of August. Now, they're not actual coupons that come to you like a paper coupon. They're going to come to your email. So make sure you save that email or write them down, put them somewhere where you're not going to lose them so you can redeem those in August. I would hate for you to um, lose those codes because I have no way of recovering for them for you. And I'm not sure if Stampin' Up! does either. Ooh, I think I just saw some lightning out there. I just saw a flash. Hello, Miss Patty. Oh, you did see that the uh, truck was back in stock. Well, good. I'm glad that um, you guys are aware of that. Awesome. Okay, so let me get um, these giveaways out of the way so I don't get anything. Put those all together. All right, let's go ahead and get started on the cards tonight. So our first card that we're doing here, this is using the countryside end paper. This is a beautiful, and this is that kit that I have, but you can get the PDF for it since the kit um, registration is um, done now. I've sold all of my kits for this class. Um, so this is beautiful, beautiful paper. You've got a lot of those blues and you've got a ton of these different shades of blue in this. That is just some gorgeous paper. So if you don't have this paper, you're really gonna want to grab yourself a uh, um, pack of it. Um, it is just gorgeous. So we're gonna make this cute little book binding card here. Really kind of fun and pretty. Let me show you the set that we're using. This is the layering leaves. Now, like I said, this is um, Rachel Tessman's that, uh, million dollar uh, achievement set. And here is the bow punch. It cuts out both of these really cool um, little leaves, floral um, pieces that you can tuck, like I said. Like, as you can see here, I have it tucked behind my sentiment just to really give the card a little extra element on that. Okay, so let me get, oh, and there are some wonderful sentiments in here. So happy to celebrate you, best wishes, um, sending hugs, thank you so much for you, thinking of you, and hello. Then you've got these different stamps that coordinate with that punch along with these two smaller ones that go with that punch, as, uh, the smaller punch as well. Or not smaller punch, but the smaller floral. Yeah, I can talk. All right, so let's get the pieces out for this. For this um, card here, we're also going to be using our stylish shapes. I am using two different circles here. I 
am using, well, there it is down there. I am using the second largest on my scrap of Knight of Navy. So the second largest is going to cut my Knight of Navy. And then my uh, third from the largest is going to cut my little white piece out of a white scrap. Okay, we're going to be using some of the brushed brass butterflies. And um, we're going to need our card base. Our card base is eight and a half by five and a half. Now, we need to do some scoring on this. So when we put this in our um, paper trimmer slash score, we are going to place this in here at the four and a quarter. And that's where we're going to do our first score. Now, do you guys see my score blade doesn't pop out anymore? Look, it's in there and it's not going anywhere because I purchased some of those new scoring blades that are in our online exclusive store that has just been um, added to the uh, online products. Pretty cool. So four and a quarter. Then we're going to, oops, I have this upside down though. Uh, four and a quarter, then we're going to slide it over to five and a half. Now I've already scored mine, so I made sure I knew what to tell you guys. So five and a half. So our first score line is going to be at the four and a quarter. Second score line is at five and a half. Okay. Then we're going to score this right on the four and a quarter, so right in half. Then on that second score line, we're going to fold back onto itself. And what we're going to do is you could take either your stamp and seal, you can take tear and tape. I'm gonna use good old green glue because unless you're being extremely forceful with this card and regardless what kind of glue you're using, you're gonna wind up ripping the card apart anyways if you're being, you know, that forceful with it, but I've never had a problem with the green glue not holding it. So we're just gonna adhere that little piece here so this flaps back and forth as our card opening. Then I have a piece of that designer series paper. Again, love the colors in this paper. This is one by five and a quarter. That's just gonna get simply placed on that little closed space there. Okay, I am going to also be using the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. Now this piece here, this is gonna fit right in the inside of this. So that is a two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I need to run this through the uh, stamp and cut and emboss. Now this is not a 3D folder. So it just goes between two of your number three plates. You don't have to pull out the specialty plate for this one. Okay, there's that. I am gonna need my simple chamois. All right, this here is just going to get adhered straight down. Yes, Nancy, right? Those sentiments are just so sweet with this stamp set. Now, 
Now, I know some people say that there is no up or down to this folder. Now, I seem to think, even though the Stampin' Up! wording is facing down here and the hinge is up here, I really think this folder, once you emboss it, that there is actual a direction because all your flowers are kind of standing upwards when you flip it this way. If you flip it this way, your flowers are all now facing down. So, I mean, if somebody's really gonna sit there and focus in and see that, then I guess it doesn't really matter. It's your discretion, but I think there's a direction and I have this thing in my mind that all my flowers need to be facing up. <laughs> so, just to let you know, I'm kind of crazy about things like that. All right, so now we're going to do some stamping and do some um, punching of this. So let me grab the pieces that we're gonna need. Um, I'm going to be using my Knight of Navy and my Balmy Blue. And we need a scrap of white and our beautiful stamp set here. So I'm going to be using the outline of this leaf here and then these little solid leaves will then be kind of a two two part stamp those will then be uh the color that goes inside of that so i like to use a darker outline for this which is my knight of navy and then the balmy blue will be in this okay so I'm gonna move that out of the way. We are going to bring in our piercing mat with a piece of scrap paper over it. And I am just going to do some stamping on this to get my little pieces done here. So we're gonna go like that. I'm gonna flip this around because when you go to um, punch these. You have to remember that there's the little punch that's going to be punched and I don't want to destroy um, if I stamp another one. So I'll cut this one off once we're done to um, stamp my third one over here. So I'm going to leave that out. Uh, Balmy Blue is what I'm going to be using on the inside of these. Oops, and you know what? I stamped the wrong ones. Oh, it doesn't matter. I stamped the wrong leaf pattern, but it's okay. I was supposed to do this one right here that had more of the little, um, the veins of the leaves, but I actually just stamped this one, which who's gonna know? Okay, just like that. So let me go ahead and punch both these out. And our punches, to keep them nice and tight, when you push this together, you can flip that up and that will hold this closed so these things aren't like getting worn and by hitting things. Um, and when you go to open it, you just simply want to hold it tight, pull this down, and then let it open. It's like a hinge in there. Hello, Pat. Welcome. All right, so I'm just going to line this up in here. First, cutting this corner piece off because it's getting caught in there. Okay, there's that. See, there's that little that little one there. So I'm just gonna set that aside because I don't like tossing those because that is very usable. Okay, there's the second one, and 
then I'm going to grab my Knight of Navy again. Let's move these. And I'm going to place that right there. And then we need the little solid bits in that lighter color. Okay. All right, there are all three of those. Now we need to take our little white circle here and I am going to grab the um, So Happy to Celebrate You stamp set or sentiment. It was crooked on there, I couldn't read it. All right, so I'm going to clean this off really quick. And using the Knight of Navy, and I'm just gonna stamp this right in the center of this circle. Okay, I think we are done with our ink. Oh. Oops, hold on you guys. I just had a weather warning come through, so saying that there was going to be an extreme dust storm. Well, yeah, I can look outside and tell you that already. <laughs> think we can all see that there's a dust storm. Okay, that's gonna go there, but I'm gonna give that a couple of seconds to dry because that is such a dark color. I like to let it absorb and dry before I start playing around with it. So let's bring our card in here and figure out how we're gonna do this. So that is going to set in the center like that. And then we're gonna grab our, our little pieces here and we're going to place those oh i know when it rains here i am kind of a cuckoo bird i like to go outside and i just love that smell and there is an actual name of that smell so patty yes 100 percent. i am right along with you girl um i can't remember the name of it there is a name though for that smell and I'm always forever forgetting what it is. But it is heaven, yes. Some people like to smell the beach and I love that too, but I really, really like the smell of the wet dirt in the desert, I agree. All right, so let's go ahead and get this down here. So I'm just gonna put just a bit of glue on the stem of this. I'm just going to kind of place that as if it was kind of sticking out like that. Now you could use your mini glue dots as well. Yeah, right when we knew that the storm was coming in, we all kind of were outside uh, moving things around. We have some water barrels that we like to set out underneath the gutters because it rains so hard sometimes that um, the gutters can't hold the water. So we have this big rain off barrel. It's like one of these big white bucket things um, that's kind of encased in wire metal and we like to kind of keep that water because we can water plants and we can do things with that water instead of, um, it is called, it is pet, peritor? I don't know. I don't know how to say that word. Pet, 
Petrichor. There you go. She just yelled from the other room. Petrichor. That's the name of the smell of wet, wet dirt. Did you get it? Yes, Petrichor. Petrichor. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, we always talk about that. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? So the rain barrels, we have them all by the sides of the houses or by the side of my house and my mom's house uh, to make sure that, you know, we are in a drought state. So why not save some of that rain that, you know, nature gives us to water our plants with? So that's what we do. We're kind of weirdos like that. So I'm going to, we try to conserve what we can and save what we can because we never know, you know, especially since Arizona, I know is fighting with the state of Colorado because that's where we get some of our water from. And I know there's been kind of some heated discussion going on between us and Colorado about keeping our water flow. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely don't want to lose water source. That would not be fun here in this desert. Hello, Denise. So now I'm going to, I adhered the white onto the blue after I put my little leaves on there. And now we're going to pop this up. Patty, I have to tell you, Miss Patty Rutledge, um, this paper right here always reminds me of you. Because I remember when you first started um, following me and doing Stampin' Up, you, uh, that's back when we had the Boho Indigo. And I remember... That was kind of her jam. She always said that she loved that. And then we got the dapper denim, or not dapper denim, what was it called? A another blue that we had had. And I just remember she really liked those colors. So every time I play with this paper and these blues, it just reminds me of you, Patty. Okay, so we're going to stick that there. See, this is where I was almost thinking we could take these little white ones. And yeah, no, I'm not going to though. I'm going to leave it alone. Let's take some of these butterflies and add these because it's just kind of a pop of that gold and I really think that is pretty on there or it's actually brass, not gold. Figure it out. Okay, there we go. Card, now let me grab... Um, So the same thing for the inside of the cards you're going to need. What did I say that was? Two and three quarters. Yep, two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So let me cut an inside. just going to place this little inside piece right in here. Now I probably wouldn't go too crazy with decorating the inside of this because now that we have adhered half, or not half, but I mean this little portion of the card, you might not want to, I mean unless you don't want to have to write much in the card, um, you want to leave yourself some space to be able to write in there. You could probably do, you know what I'm I was going to do that, but no, I'm going to leave it alone. So there is card number one, this super cute. I know because of the weather, I'm having issues with internet and it seems like a lot of people are, I'm freezing up on them. I apologize. Um, just bear with me. It does get better in and out. So there is card number one. Okay, now let's do card number two. Okay, we are going to be using some super fun colors here. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Now, this card actually was inspired by our catalog. Now, you guys know how I always tell you to use your catalogs for inspiration. Um, let me see if I can find the page where this was. 
um, just to kind of show you that I didn't do exactly what they had on there, but I um, was just playing around. So if you see, where's it at? Hmm, maybe it's not in here. I thought I, I got it off of one of the Stampin' Up! Because it was just a small little, um, I don't know. It had to have been in my resources that I had seen it in because this suite is all over the place. But I don't know. I can't find it now. But anyways, um, I had the inspiration from the catalog to create this card. Ouch. Okay. So there is this piece of paper here, which is a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Now, this comes from the masterfully made 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now, I have cut mine apart here, but I'm going to show you the sheet that I chose to make this. So you can kind of see if you have this paper and you want to duplicate this card. I have come in and I have cut this at my um, five and a quarter. So that gave me a bigger piece up here. Then I've cut this off at five and a quarter. So as you can see right here, these went together and then I come in and I just cut off this top part to give me a five and a quarter up here because I really want to see the flowers. So you can use, because tonight I'm going to use this upper piece on tonight's card. Here I use the bottom portion of this paper on this card. So this gives you a lot of those colors in there, but then if you use a bigger piece of here, you're gonna get more of the blues on the top of your card. So I wanted to show you that. So if you're recreating these and you're a little bit confused on what I did, that's why I wanted to show you that. But this is called the Masterfully Made Paper and the colors in this are just gorgeous in this paper. Beautiful, beautiful colors, as you can see here. All right, so this is what I was saying. I used the top portion of this paper. Now, you know what I didn't even realize um, until cutting this paper out? And I cut so much of this paper during our, um, uh, what's it called, my paper share. And I never noticed that there were words in the background. It's like it's got typed print in the background never noticed it until I was making this card so it's very very pretty paper okay I'm gonna set that aside for the moment so our base is this gorgeous refresh color this is berry burst this is eight and a half by five and a half we're gonna fold it in half okay this is four by five and a quarter, and that is just gonna get laid just right on the front there. Then I need a scrap piece of Pretty Peacock, a scrap piece of Old Olive, and um, I don't know what I grabbed that for, but I did. <laughs> I don't know, why. oh, no, I don't know. I don't know why I grabbed that bubble bath. I don't need that. And then I have cut two of these out just so if I mess up on one, I can um, do the other one. But uh, this is a um, one inch by two and a quarter inch. And I need old olive for part of this. So I'm gonna set these aside because those need to be stamped. I also cut off just that top portion that I had so much of. I just cut a little strip because we can put that in the inside of our card. And then I have a scrap of basic white that um, we will do our stamping on. All right, so let me go ahead and grab my punch. And I'm just gonna punch out these. So again, I keep my little, little ones. So I um, can use those on a different project. There is my pretty peacock. There is my old olive. And then we are going to do some stamping. So 
So let me grab this and this. Clean this stamp off. And I'm gonna actually bring in that other one since I didn't use it on the last card. And I'm gonna actually use both of those. All right, so let's bring in this little piece first. I'm gonna mount that. That one I'm gonna have to mount in just a minute. I'm gonna put it actually on this long one here. Okay, I'm gonna grab the old olive. We're gonna grab the, and I just had this over here, but forgot to grab it. We are doing sending hugs. Okay, sending hugs is gonna be an old olive. And that is just gonna go centered right on that little one inch piece there. Okay, ew, I don't think I like the way that came out. I think my mom's ink pad needs some more ink added to it. Let's see how this one does. Yep, that's better. Okay. And that one's better. We're gonna put that one aside because we don't want that one. That one doesn't look as good. I forgot to bring over all my blocks. So I am working with my mom's blocks. <laughs> so I've gotta keep moving things around. Okay, there are those two so I don't lose those. Let's bring in our white piece and I need my, these are the three colors that I'm working with here. We've got Berry Burst, Bubble Bath, and Fresh Freesia, which are the colors that are coordinate with this paper. So for my Berry Burst, I'm taking the other uh, one with the more veins on there and I'm just going to stamp that. Now that ink pad is very, very juicy. They're very, very juice. I'm gonna try to get some of that ink off before going in and cleaning that. Okay. Then I'm going to use my bubble bath. Actually, I'm not using Fresh Freesia on this card. That's the next card, sorry guys. I'm just using bubble bath and um, yeah, and whatever this is, berry burst. Okay, and then we're gonna use this one that's got more of the more solid leaves. And again, I'm gonna come down here so I can, there we go. And I did that in the wrong color. I meant to do that in bubble bath. That's what I get for leaving both of my ink pads open. So we're just gonna flip it over because we've got both sides of our paper here. Perfect. And both sides can be used because nobody's gonna see the underside of it. So it's okay. All right, so grab my punch. This is our bubble bath one. Oops, I keep forgetting to cut off that corner. I 
Hello, Vicki. Thank you all that have shared. I've been watching and I know I've seen you guys share this video and I didn't tell you guys personally, thank you. I do always go back and thank everyone when you have shared my video, so. I do truly appreciate it. Aren't those two colors so pretty together when you do that berry burst and that bubble bath? It's the perfect two colors to kind of accent each other. Oh yeah, did you guys, I don't know if my mom got them posted or not. My mom made some of the cutest cards the other day. I think she already got them mailed off, um, but I was going to show them, but she made some, they weren't necessarily graduation cards, but they were just pretty much congratulating uh, the um, grandkids for uh, her step grandkids that, um, for just, you know, doing so great in school. They got really good grades this year. And so she made some of the cutest little cards using the Hey Chuck set. And she actually sent me a picture, so I will have to um, upload it for you guys over on the, stink, the Pink Barn Stampers group because I really want you guys to see them because they are adorable. But she used those two colors, I believe, the Berry Burst and the um, Bubble Bath. Okay, so this is just gonna get placed right on here like that. I need to grab, I'm gonna be using the Simply Elegant trim behind this just to make kind of that gold pop behind this. Okay, I need my all my little pieces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is the Pretty Peacock. Now it does get kind of lost in behind here, but we're gonna make it work. I'm just gonna take this stem and just kind of put this little pink over the top of this, kind of just adhering those together. And do the same thing with the old olive, but I'm gonna flip this and make it kind of face that way. Because you can flip these around and make them kind of be orientated the way you want them. Okay, just like that, those two are together. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a glue dot and put a glue dot right on this one and pull that up. And that is gonna get placed right underneath. Oh, no, that one, I need to do this one first. This one's gonna go first, and it's gonna be kind of facing more that way. Then this one's gonna come in and just be like that. And I'm going to pull these leaves forward so both of my card stocks are more towards the back. That's one thing that's kind of fun about this. You can manipulate these leaves to look like they're intertwined with each other. So there, I just pulled that pretty peacock forward and it's very cool to do that with. All right, now before I adhere that down, we're gonna grab this trim here. And I think I'm gonna keep it in the gold. Now, since this is brand new, I have to find the end of it. There it is. So again, I'm going to come in here with a glue dot and just Apply the glue dot kind of right. I'm just gonna take it off here because I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Come on. I'm gonna place it right there and just kind of squish it around and flatten it out so I can get to it. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm going to just make a big bow with this and then cut off my excess. And with this, I can pull each one of my little tails where I want them. And I am just going to let this, if I put this like this, I want this hmm, kind of going like that. 
So I can come in here and pull this. I'm gonna actually flip it around. Pull this where I want it and then just place that right on top of that little glue dot to hold that in place. And see, and I put it on the wrong way. I needed it going this way. So that's one nice thing about a glue dot. If you don't like where it's at, pick it up and move it. And then just push it back down into the glue dot and it will stay. And we're gonna pop this up so we won't have any problems with it um, moving around. But that way we just add kind of some of that. And if you don't like the size of this one, you can always come over here and pick the tail up. If I can pull it out from these leaves and just pull that in a bit to make it the size you want it. Just like that. And I think this really adds just a touch of bling that this card needs and I love it. Okay, so now we're gonna grab some of our dimensionals. Hello, Noreen. Hello, Melanie. We did not get any rain. We got some sprinkles, but I mean, it is looking pretty crazy all around us, though. It is awfully black out there. You can see that all around us, it's raining. But like I was saying earlier, is that we have a big mountain behind us. And as the rain comes in from the south, it will normally kind of part the seas behind that mountain. And then it goes all around us. Every once in a while will it kind of hit us. But being up here with the mountain behind us, it kind of shields us. Okay, so I'm just going to place this right. I'm going to move it this way just a little bit more. Like that. but my little tail got stuck in that. I don't want that there. Okay, so I'm gonna move that just like that. Isn't that pretty? I just love how all the colors kind of really grab the colors off that designer series paper to really give that a pop. And then this gold on here really just kind of brightens everything up and really just grabs your eye over here. So yeah, it's just like a little floral arrangement on your sentiment there. So that is card number two. Let me grab an inside. I'm gonna need to cut my mom some inside since I'm snatching all of hers. Okay, we need four by five and a quarter. And we're going to use that little piece. It's hiding. I'm gonna put this along the bottom. Yes, I love this DSP also. The colors are just so vibrant in this. They really did a good job of pairing such beautiful colors. Okay, we're going to take this and add this to the inside. I like how this paper, I didn't show you the whole thing, but this paper has, um, it's almost like, not. I don't wanna say ombre because it's not ombre, but it almost is like rainbow-ish because most of these, let me get some of this stuff moved out of the way so I can show you this paper really quick before I move on to card number three. Okay, so there is that beautiful card for number two. But when you look at this paper, See, there's a piece of that that I had extra laying there. See where I'm saying you almost have like these rainbow 
colors together, but they did such a good job with adding some brights and then some of your darker blues and then a bright uh, that's either pe pretty peacock or that's our lemon lime twist. And then you get into more of the vibrant colors, but it looks like a mountain setting with just torn paper. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Then on the back side, you have more of that torn look, but this you have all berry burst on. And then you've got this one. This is great for cutting in half and making your cards with. And then you've got, again, that's the pretty peacock. There's another one of those if you wanted to do your um, leaves and more if you wanted to use your crushed curry or your uh, poppy parade. You know, you could do this in very different colors if you use this piece here. Then you've got some of your fresh freeze on the back of that one. And then again, you've got more of that rainbow look here, but it kind of goes from corner to corner with the uh, different colors fading. And then again, you could cut this and use these separate pieces. And then there's the piece that we're using and then more of the pretty peacock on there. Or maybe that is uh, Lost Lagoon, not Pretty Peacock. So just to show you how pretty that paper really is so you're not just um, seeing the one paper and being sold, but then you can look at the whole thing and see how gorgeous it is all together. Hello, Bonnie. Okay, so our next card, let me move all this stuff around and get to the next one. Our next one is this beautiful card. Now, I belong to a virtual swap, and this card was on our virtual swap, but I mixed it up a little bit. Now, let me tell you how gorgeous it is, the card that she did. Um, she used, instead of using black, because I changed it just a touch, I used black for the base and black for this. Um, she used the Blackberry Bliss and it was so gorgeous with this fresh freesia because you really just get those two tones together and it is amazing. But I used this paper back here that had the black on it and that's why I went with the black. So, all right, let's get what we're needing out of here. And with this card, I used the... This is the Nested Essential Dyes is what I used for this set or for this card. For some of my little elements here, I did, um, I took a piece of white scrap and I cut out, well, I cut out two just in case I do a boo-boo on one. I'll have two of them already pre-done. I did the second from smallest in my white and then I did this little banner here with the second from largest. This one right here on this paper. Now this paper is from, this is that huge paper pack that comes with so much paper. This is the Delightfully Eclectic 12 by 12. Now this has got paper to go with every stamp set that we have and every uh, color in here. I mean, not every, but you do get a lot of different colors. This is a wonderful pack to have. Um, it's a lot of paper, so you could definitely make tons of cards with that pack. Okay, so I'm also using the Painted Textures 3D embossing folder. So this one I am going to need to um, use my specialty plate with. And I'm gonna need my Fresh Freesia ink and my uh, Tuxedo Black and my Bubble Bath. Okay, those are gonna be there. So I've already got my little cut elements here. Um, that was the paper that I used that with. Um, we need our card base, which is um, eight and a half by five and a half. We're just gonna fold this and burnish it down. Okay, then this is four by five and a quarter. This is fresh freesia. I'm going to go run this 
through my die cutting machine. Using my specialty plate. gives us a really beautiful texture. It's really cool. There's that. Just a very neat touch of texture to that cardstock. Okay, that is going to go down next. Then we need a scrap of black, scrap of uh, bubble bath, and a scrap of freesia. So what we're going to do, and then we also need our, this is our metallic mesh ribbon. Now this came out a few years ago for Halloween. It was kind of the way that it was displayed on the cards were just so cool. It looked like it was spider webs. But this has been around for a couple of years and I've seen it on all sorts of cards. It really adds a gorgeous touch of that metallic pop on your cards. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take our Fresh Freesia and grab this here, our Fresh Freesia. Now this one we're going to be stamping tone on tone, Fresh Freesia. I'm just gonna put that one right there. Okay, then move that aside, bubble bath. Again, tone on tone, using, I need the other one out here. Using the other open leaf one. And I just stuck my finger in that. Okay, now I'm going to close that. And what I want to do on my little die cut piece here is I want to take out the sentiment for you. And I'm gonna use my black tuxedo. This is our memento. And I'm just gonna stamp this towards the side over here. Giving that a second to marinate into that paper. All right, so what I need to do is set that aside with the rest of our pieces. These are can be moved. We need to stamp our stamp, punch this out. If I can get it straight in there. Lois, if you're still in here, how are you feeling? I know you've been a little under the weather. I hope that um, you are feeling better now. Now I need to just do the little single one over here because I need that one also. So I need two of the little ones also in that, those same colors. So we've got our bubble bath and we've got our little fresh freesia. And then now in our black, I'm just gonna cut out two of those. So we've got both of those like that. And then now we are ready to start assembling this card. Okay, get that out of the way. 
we're going to glue this straight down. Now, I don't really know if there's a front and a back to this pattern because since you've got that texture, it's textured on both sides. So you can choose what you want raised and whatnot. Okay, there's that. I'm going to be taking my little banner and my little banner is going to be sitting right there. This is, so oh, I know I need to move that over just a skosh because I don't want it completely covering that, but that's good. I'm just doing my placement at the moment so I can make sure I get everything the way I want it to look. So I'm gonna take this and put some glue on the corner here and I'm just gonna have that kind of going out the top like that okay then I'm gonna grab my um let's see I think I'm gonna put this here because I want my little purple one to be behind it so I'm just gonna take this and put this off to the side right like that sticking out the side and then when I put this like that it'll be kind of sticking or you can see the black one still behind that then we'll add these little guys in there when we go to do that but I'm gonna stick this one so let's go ahead and adhere this down now So I'm gonna adhere that right to that little banner piece, just like that. Hold that there for a second, let that adhere, and I've got glue on my fingers. Okay, this one is gonna go right on the front of this, just like, uh, kinda like that. We're gonna tip it. Okay, then the little purple, or fresh freesia I might say, is gonna go right in front of it, like that. This little um, bubble bath is going to go on the back of this right here. So now what you can do is you can pull it between the black and that fresh freesia and pull those pieces up. So this is where you can come in here and you can pull this forward. So see where it now comes in front of that and you could do the same thing on this. You can really play around with this. Um, like that, this one's gonna stay back there. Then I need the little black one. I mean, you guys can really have fun decorating these. These things would make beautiful if you did this in gold and silver or maybe gold and black. These would make very, very gorgeous um, wedding invitations or like an anniversary card. So I'm in a now slide because I don't have glue behind this side. I'm just gonna take this and slide this one right in behind that little white piece and then hold it. And again, we can pull that fresh freesia up in front of that, just like that. Oh no, I like it back up there. Okay, just so we get to see all of those colors. All right, now that is going to go right over here, but we're gonna pop that up. And since we've got the white piece sticking there, we're going to pop that up as well. Okay. I'm gonna pop that and pop up this. Hello, Janet, new watcher. Welcome, my dear. Okay, we're going to pull off the backs of this. Okay, and we are going to simply place this right towards the bottom corner. Okay, that's a little crooked. There we go. All right. Everything is down. 
Now we're going to come in here. I'm also going to be putting some of the iridescent rhinestone basic jewels on here. Um, because as you can see, those sitting next to that, that really grabs out some of that pinks and purples that we have going on in this card. But first, I'm going to just come in here ah, and throw my scissors and make a little bow. So if you just grab this stuff and pinch it and kind of just roll it around and create a little bow. Can you guys see I'm getting better, better at bow making? Ha ha. Well, this stuff is pretty forgiving too when you make a bow. So I'm just gonna tighten this down because I don't need my little bow pieces that big. So we can tighten that, cinch it. And this really has a neat flair if you take these and you pull these apart like this. It's really got a neat little look to it. There we go. All right, that looks pretty symmetrical-ish. Okay, then I'm gonna cut off this down here. Okay, now that is extremely long and crazy. We don't need to go that crazy with it, but for now, we're gonna just get this bow added on here. Now, this is where you're gonna want to keep playing with this because you don't really want your bow covering up your words. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a glue dot and put it on the back of this and then place this right on those stems there, just like that. And this is where you can kind of trim up the crazy legs on this, just like that. And you know what, I'm kind of crazy because I like hanging onto these because sometimes when you lay something down, you can just put this there and then put your little piece over the front of it and it's really just kind of a pretty little accent behind. So I'm kind of a weird holder, uh, hoarder and hang on to my little tails of that. Just another little idea for you guys. Okay, let's get out our little basic um, iridescent rhinestones. I'm trying to look for my little, oh, there it is. So I don't stab myself because I've been known to do that. So I am going to come in here and I am going to grab one of these big ones. Put the big one right down there. A medium one is gonna go right there. And then let's grab a little one. Why not? And we're gonna put it right there. There we go. Very, very pretty. Love this card. These colors are just so pretty together. Okay, let's get an any. Let's make sure we have, ooh, look at there, one more white. I gotta cut her some whites. Make sure I don't forget to do that. Okay, we are going to I'm going to oops, keep my trimmer and I'm going to cut another little sliver. I'm going to do a half inch strip of that uh, designer series paper there. What size, uh, what is the size for the insides of my cards? The, I use the insides of my cards four by five and a quarter. My mom keeps them cut at uh, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So that's why I'm cutting those down because she keeps hers with an eighth of an inch difference. And I do the same as what normally is on the outside of my card just to keep things visually looking symmetrical. Okay, I'm just going to put this. Now, don't forget you guys, um, tomorrow you can come back and check my blog 
and I will have all the dimensions on my blog for you guys. There will be a shopping list with all the supplies that I have used here, and there will be still photos, and you can see a replay of this video over on stampinthepinkbarn.com. That will take you to my blog. Okay, so now we're gonna take this piece here and there's actually a direct link that when um, you go to shop with me in the description of underneath the um, first picture that you see, you'll see a direct link that'll take you right to my host code. So then when you shop with me, you don't have to try to remember to add that. You can have it already be um, linked directly in. It'll take you right to my store with my host code already added. Okay, there we go. There's the inside to tie all that together. Let's bring in all three of these cards to show you how beautiful this set is. There we go. There are all three of these beautiful cards. I will go get photos taken of these and get these added to the blog so you guys can Go ahead and remake these, or what do they call it? You can case them, copy them, whatever you call it, because these are super, super fun. Don't forget, when you spend $35 or more and use my host code, you will get all the supplies needed to make these beautiful cards. Um, the only thing I don't supply is I don't stamp for you. You have to stamp for yourself. Um, so it would be a great, if you don't have this um, layering leaves and the bow punch, it would be a great way. And don't forget that that sale is coming up on the 19th, which is um, Wednesday. So you can get it then and um, make sure that you're not leaving out that um, when you spend or make sure you're not forgetting that when you spend over $50, you're going to get some bonus coupons as well. Uh, so when you shop in the month of August, you can save yourself some money. All right, you guys have yourselves a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for coming in here for make it Monday or July 17th. I'm so glad you guys all came in and watched this. I hope you enjoyed these cards. Um, I had fun making them for you. I truly think this is a beautiful set. All right, you guys, have a great night. I will see you guys um, Wednesday night for our mystery stamping, or I can see you guys, hopefully, fingers crossed, that YouTube, my rotation will work on my phone. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to... I don't know, maybe just go live here on Facebook Thursday at noon and then record it. But I'm not going to think like that because I'm going to hope to God that YouTube works. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a good night.